Hi everyone. What I'm going to do in the screencast is show you how to use the UNB Law Library site to help you with your research for Dr. Ray Williams and Jim Clowater's School Law and Ethics class, which is compulsory for both elementary and middle secondary students. So we're going to go to UNB, sorry, law.unb.ca slash library, which is right there. And this is going to take us to the main page. All I'm going to show you, though there's a wealth of information on this site, uh, all we need for our research is this one menu, the e-resources menu. So I want to draw your attention to three different sections of this menu. The first one is help with legal writing. You're going to find, once you actually start reading your cases, that there's a lot of legal terms you've probably never seen before. If you click on this link right here, it'll take you to a list of different dictionaries you can peruse to look for the definitions of legal terms. It's going to come in handy if you're not at the library and you don't have access to Black's Dictionary of Legal Terms, which you can find on the computer desk. The next thing I want to show you was the legislation and the case law. These two lead to the same place. They lead to um, an online database where you can type in searches for different legislation or different court cases. So just for the sake of uh, showing you, I'm going to go through case law, but this will take you, the legislation link will take you to the same place. What you're going to find if you're working from home, and this will only happen if you are working from home, is you're going to be prompted to log in through the proxy server. To get to the proxy server page or to get to the database, you're going to go right down here where you see quick law. Now, there's two different entries. Make sure you don't click on the first one because you need to be a law student to access it from here. Quick Law for UNB and STU non-law students and faculty is where you want to go. So let's follow that link. Now you're at the UNB Libraries Indices and Abstracts um, search page, and Quick Law is right there. So we can click on that to go into Quick Law, and here we go. I'm working from home, so I'm being prompted for my email ID and my PIN number. So I'll key that in. The PIN number is actually the uh, number you got at the beginning of the year um, that you have to use to set up your student network account for your information. It's not your email. It's not your email password, which you can change through the webmail website. So I'm going to log in. Um, we're not going to register, and we are going to accept the terms of use. You can read those if you want. It's, uh, I guarantee you, it's going to be lengthy. So now we're finally in Quick Law, which is a great resource. It's actually extremely easy to find whatever you want to find. If you go into the search term section right here, you can actually just type in a simple query, just words. Uh, you can also use more intelligent operators like and to specify that this word and this word have to both be included in the results. Same thing with or. The really neat one is this right here, the uh, forward slash and the number that indicates five words near. So for example, a sample query I could type in is uh, teacher eight words away from the word misconduct. And that'll give me a whole list of court cases and a few other documents as well that have those two words in them, eight words apart at the maximum. So I can type in any query I want here if I want to just browse for cases in education or, what's even more useful for us, is this menu over here, Find a Document. We're going to go Find Case by Name. And for the sake of convenience, uh, Mary Ann showed us in the uh, YouTube video on the Wikispace how to find a specific court case called um, West versus Red Deer. And what she did was she went to the Education Law Journal to pull out the citation, then went over to the Canadian Abridgment, Volume 31, to search for the actual uh, collections inside the reading room that would have that court case. So it's a four-step process uh, by the time you're all said and done to find the content of that court case. What we can do here is just simply type in And surprise, surprise, uh, it was an intelligent search. It managed to find the entire court case. And since it was the only result returned, it showed me the result automatically. 
this, what you're seeing in this frame, is the exact same text that Marianne would have found in the reading room after going through with that four-step process. So the entire judge's decision rendered and the entire justification for it, all that is contained in this document. You can read it on here, or if you want, you can even download it. I'll show you how to do that. You even have choices on what format you want to receive it in. There is Microsoft Word, HTML, rich text format. I'm going to go with PDF. You even control the text size if you want to. And hit download. So, there's the document ready to be downloaded. All I have to do is click on it. Or follow these instructions if you're actually a Microsoft uh, Internet Explorer user. You see it's downloading right now. I can close this window now. And once that's complete, we'll actually see what kind of documents we can obtain virtually through QuickLaw. And there we go. There's the document. Just open it up in my reader. And there's a cover page. And the entire document in beautiful Times New Roman. Very readable. And uh, you can browse it offline. So I recommend that if you want to skip a whole lot of heartache, try looking for the, uh, the case name once you find it uh, as a citation in the education and law journals. And skip the entire Canadian abridgment, skip the entire table of classification and the reading room. Just go right to the Quick Law website and see if you can uh, find it there. Now, I'll show you what I did here. The results you're seeing here were returned because I typed my query in right into the general search. However, I'm going to show you what would have happened if I typed in West versus Red Deer into the find by case name. So I have those results loaded in Firefox. This is the window you'll see once you type that in and hit enter. And you can see it's giving us three different listings. I recommend you read through all three of them, see if there's any differences. You can discriminate yourselves. <clears throat> so that, in a nutshell, is how you can use QuickLaw to just browse without any particular case in mind the, uh, the listing of all court cases uh, in all collections in Canada. Very handy resource, and uh, i got to say I'm quite grateful that this is available to us. I intend to use it myself, and I'll see you at the finish line.